On tonight's CTV News, thousands of ANZ bank workers go on strike. A University of Canterbury lecturer stands up against racism. And collectors take to the streets for Pink Ribbon Day. This is CTV News, I'm Grant Mangan. Thousands of ANZ bank workers around Canterbury took strike action today. A National Day of Action, protesting for better working conditions. ANZ Canterbury workers took to the streets today, taking a stand for secure working hours. Unfortunately, due to a clause in their current contracts, no ANZ staff were able to officially comment. They did allow Paul Watson from First Union to speak on their behalf. Wages are um, inadequate. This um, bank has only been offering between um, you know, 2 and 2.7% uh, uh, in terms of a pay increase. Uh, and they also are really upset about the fact that the bank wants to have flexibility of their working hours. The contracts proposed by ANZ have made the workers angry, resulting in 96% of the members taking industrial action. That means that month by month they could change their, their working hours in terms of their start-finish times each day and that's very insecure work in terms of being able to plan their, their lives around their family and, and other recreational activities. So they're very upset about that. With hundreds striking against ANZ throughout the country, the branch in Twizer was reportedly unable to open until workers from Timaru stepped in. Paul Watson says it takes a lot for bank workers to take up striking action. To show the depth of feeling that people have around the unfairness of the way the bank's been treating them, particularly when the profit of the bank is $1.37 billion, it's an extraordinary amount, and the CEO of the bank has had a 14% pay increase to, you know, he's on millions of dollars a year, he earns $2,000 an hour, and these workers are saying that's just not right. Named New Zealand's most profitable bank, ANZ has been negotiating agreement for their workers, which was answered with a resounding no. One anonymous worker said today, without the good work of the employees, the bank would not be in the successful position it is in today. And I think the general public would have a view that when a bank makes $1.37 billion profit, that actually the distribution of that profit should be allocated out in a, in a fairer way, particularly to the staff that work really hard for the bank to provide that profit for them. Joe Albertista, CTV News. The University of Canterbury Students Association has come under fire following racist photos being posted online. Taking a stand against racism and equality, a University of Canterbury lecturer has handed back his prize for being the student's top teacher. When there has been recent events which really seem to encourage this sort of divisive behaviour and there's not been a strong stand against it, I thought I can't be seen to benefit from that, I can't be seen to be someone who supports that in any way, so I gave my Le Lecture of the Year award back. Those recent events sparked by photos of these costumes, which are now being called offensive, including a carload of students dressed as the Taliban and a take on the Ebola breakout. Definitely some of the things were in bad taste. Organised by the university's engineering society, the costumes were entries in NSOC's controversial Roundy 500. A car rally where car themes are judged on creativity. This year, NSOC encouraging students that the more inappropriate, the better. But Eckhart Veer believes the University Student Association hasn't taken a strong enough stance on the photos, posting his reasons for handing back the award on an online blog, including his own experiences with racism. It's not something that I wanted to do in this sort of manner. It's not that I'm trying to say that university is racist in any way. That's not the truth at all. But there's a small minority who want to encourage this, and that's what I'm standing up against. The blog post has received more than 40,000 views online from around the world, his post on Facebook being shared by more than 200 people. The marketing lecturer now being hailed as a role model by students, staff, the public and the Race Relations Commissioner for speaking out. I think it's really brave and it's really, it's quite, it's quite something to return an award to stand up for something you believe in and I think that's really, it's, yeah he's really fantastic. He's doing the right thing in his eyes and that's what it's about. Mr Veer believes the Student Association, the ones who gave him the award 
board have neglected to draw the line on NSOC's behaviour. When the UCSA is not doing what I think is enough to try and encourage that sort of change in their behaviour, then it's not something I want to be involved with. Sarah Platt, the president of the university Student Association, released a statement yesterday saying the body was committed to representing all student diversity. The UCSA will now have a new equity and diversity advisory committee, educate clubs towards inclusiveness, hold an international student forum and continue its role in Diversity Week for 2015. Platt says they're working towards an inclusive and tolerant campus and it's an ongoing process that the UCSA is committed to. I don't feel that minorities and women should be tolerated. What are we doing to upset you that much? You should include us. You know, we don't want to be tolerated. It seems like you're even more divisive with that sort of word. The UCSA now vowing to ensure students and staff are working in an environment of belonging on campus. Emma Cropper, CTV News. Raising awareness for breast cancer, collectors throughout New Zealand took to the streets, hoping to make a difference. Over 300 women in Canterbury will be diagnosed with breast cancer this year. Scattered across the region, breast cancer volunteers dressed in pink did their part, collecting for the cause. For many across New Zealand, a popular way to show support is a small donation and wearing a pink ribbon. It's just showing that um, people are becoming more aware and people are happy to give and happy to support and just be there for our fellow sisters. In the last 20 years, mortality has dropped by a third, but in Canterbury, 70 to 100 women are still lost to the disease. The money collected goes towards further research. Research into finding a cure, really and helping the people along the way who are suffering in any way we can. Why this breast cancer supporter is personally so passionate about the cause. It has affected my family deeply and um, everybody's got a story to tell and everybody has known somebody who has been affected and um, I've just been deeply affected by the people in my family who have been affected by it so I'd just like to give back. Angela says for any person describing what it's like to be diagnosed with breast cancer is difficult. It affects you deeply, um, emotionally, psychologi you know, psychologically, um, and it affects the whole family, everybody involved, because um, you know, to, to go through what women have to go through for the treatment is very intense, and um, so it affects everybody around them. Collections will continue tomorrow throughout Canterbury. Just get behind what we're doing. Any, anything helps. We, we take any, any grateful amount. Um, this year you can text to donate, which is a, a new thing they've just introduced, um, and just, just get behind the cause. It's so worthy and um, very deserving. Any concerns about breast cancer symptoms should be referred to a GP or visit anychanges.co.nz. Joelle Batista, CTV News. Coming up, anti-animal testing advocates challenge new national figures that say it's declining. Undergone home renovations? Looking for that special something to complete a room? Look no further than the Hitching Post. Their extensive range ensures you can find that special something. From plasma cut metalwork, to candles, artwork, weather vanes, or even a customised gate. So come on down to the Hitching Post, 722 Marshland Road. Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! Come in and meet the locals at the Bush Inn Centre. Whether it's to grab a coffee on the go or to catch up with a friend over lunch or dinner, the Bush Inn Centre is the perfect place. With our unique range of shops, you'll find everything you're looking for and more. Our friendly locals are always happy to help. We have plenty of parking at the Bush Inn Centre, making your shopping experience just a little bit easier. So come in, meet the locals and shop Bush Inn. You'll find us on the corner of Rickerton and Waimari Roads.
A way-in motion site is being installed at the Rakaia Bridge. It monitors loads travelling over the bridge to ensure minimal damage. It's a short-term solution until strengthening work earmarked for the future is completed. The New Zealand Transport Agency says they're encouraging more freight being transported on fewer vehicles throughout the country. The $500,000 way-in motion site enables the NZTA to collect data from travelling vehicles and identify who is in breach of their permit. Work on the way-in motion site will begin next month and will be completed by the end of the year. These school holidays, high school students have been building rockets. Marcus Gibbs caught up with them today as they launched their creations. Twenty-two students from all over Canterbury have been learning about aerodynamics this week. This challenge to build a water rocket out of an old bottle. So the kids have been designing different rockets with different types of fins and different numbers of fins using computer-aided design and then from that they've actually built the rockets. Some of the creative efforts went far. Other rockets were a bit short of expectations. These students have learned about the effects gravity has on projectiles. What goes up must come down. Year 9 student Daniel Freighter wants to be an engineer when he graduates university in a few years' time. His rocket was the most impressive on the day and went the furthest, more than 25 metres across the concrete. It was really fun. Yeah. I've never actually done anything like this before, so it's quite good. He's a fan of space and designed his rockets on models he'd seen in movies. Of course, Daniel's was built on a much smaller budget than the ones he's seen on the big screen. All the fins on it are actually just um, off meat packets. You just cut them out and stick them on with hot glue gun. A competition was held and Daniel was deemed the winner, but just getting the rocket flying was a sign of success. It's all about fun and learning um, physics through activities, project-based learning and having a great time in the holidays. The holiday programme wrapped up today. After several days of fun, practical learning, next week it's back to school again for this lot. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. The annual alpaca show began in Christchurch today. Breeders came from all over New Zealand to present the finest of their herds. More than 200 alpacas in attendance for their national show. Different from other New Zealand livestock, these quiet animals are busy in a fleece competition. Shirley Grant and Anya Walkington are the event organisers. Here's what they love about alpacas. Oh, just their nature. They're just exquisite animals, uh, easy to manage. That's why a lot of people get into alpacas because they're very easy to manage. They're majestic, they're really easy on the land. Um, they're not like horses or cattle that, that have major problems with, um, you know, digging up the land and things like that. They're, um, they're great for people of all ages. Like my daughter's been in it since she was 13 and we've got exhibitors here who are in their, um, you know, 70s. An animal for everyone. With only 25,000 in New Zealand, the alpaca are still considered rare and exotic. The fibre, the breeders say, is what it is all about. What they want to see is the fibre industry take off in New Zealand. We're growing our fibre industry here in New Zealand. Um, we've got about five or six alpaca studs which are leading the forefront in the, in the industry. And just by them sort of um, taking the bull by the horn, so to speak, it's really pushing our industry forward. Originally from Peru, where they have three and a half million alpacas, the alpacas are farmed for their fibre. Here in New Zealand, alpaca is more of a luxury market. Shirley Grant and Anya Walkington say they call it the fibre of the gods. Well, the fibre to actually develop, uh, we've noticed a big increase in the prices that people are paying for fleece. It's becoming more popular, almost not quite mainstream, but it's becoming a, a highly appreciated fibre. The quality of the breeding now is such that it's getting close to being comparable to cashmere, which um, puts it on a whole new level. What adds to the quality of the fibre is the variety of different colours. It's got excellent thermal qualities, it's warmer than sheep's wool, they've done some tests, stronger than sheep's wool as well. Softer most of the time, a lot of times softer. Mm. Um, and of course it comes in all 22 different natural colours and that, that's probably one of the real highlights of alpaca, uh, which means you can have a, you know, a whole range of colours from white through to all your beiges, your browns, greys, blacks, true blacks. Open to the public, the National Alpaca Show runs on Saturday from 9 until 5 and on Sunday 10am until 1pm. Joel Batista, CTV News. National figures of animal testing may be declining, 
But an animal rights group says it's still unacceptable that a high percentage of animals are dying as a result of testing. Nearly a quarter of a million animals were tested on in New Zealand last year. It seems almost inconceivable, but the numbers speak for themselves. 224,048 animals were used in testing in 2013, and many didn't survive. You know, with 224,000 animals tested upon, and 80,000 of those animals died as a result of, of that research, uh, you know, that's a lot of animal suffering, and we're very concerned about that. Those numbers are outlined within the National Animal Ethics Advisory Committee's 2013 annual report released this week. The report notes that 16,000 of the animals suffered greatly during the testing. And that was actually a little bit higher than it was last year. So we don't think there's anything to be too proud of at the moment. The study shows the amount of animals tested on has decreased 25.9% since 2012. However, SAFE says this is nothing to be proud of and it's only because of an ongoing trial finishing. A lot of the research projects go actually by three-year cycles. Um, so last year we, they finished with some of these um, major projects that they did, especially with, uh, with cattle, for instance. So that's why you see a drop of about 70,000 uh, uh, cattle being used. Hunters concerned over animal testing taking place at universities around the country, one of them Lincoln University. Most of the research there is for, for agriculture research. So effectively this is not to, to improve our quality of life. This is just so that people can make more money out of animals. And we don't believe that's a justification for causing suffering. This is an Official Information Act request response from the Lincoln University to the New Zealand Anti-Vivisection Society, released this time last year. In it, the Vice-Chancellor says that Lincoln University has a long-established position of not publicly releasing details on animal manipulations involved in research. The university's reasoning is that by disclosing the research figures, staff could be put in danger and that the researchers involved have specifically requested that such information is not released. CTV News has asked Lincoln University to supply data on how many animals were tested on in the past year and how many were killed in the process. However, a Lincoln University spokesman says the university has an obligation to protect staff from inappropriate protest actions concerning animal testing for research. In a statement he said that the university complies fully with the Animal Welfare Act with its testing and research and is approved by the Animal Ethics Committee. Several universities around the country take part in animal testing. Last year 53,260 animals were used for research, the lowest number in the last five years. SAFE would, however, eventually like to see all animal testing banned. We do, we're an animal rights organisation so we, we don't believe that deliberately inflicting suffering on animals uh, is a acceptable but what we are saying is let's start with the, the worst category suffering categories because then you can start looking at like is this really still acceptable in, in modern day New Zealand. Safe's view is that anyone who opposes animal testing should boycott cosmetic products that have been tested on animals. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. Still to come, your local weather update. Come in and meet the locals at the Bush Inn Centre. Whether it's to grab a coffee on the go or to catch up with a friend over lunch or dinner, the Bush Inn Centre is the perfect place. With our unique range of shops, you'll find everything you're looking for and more. Our friendly locals are always happy to help. We have plenty of parking at the Bush Inn Centre, making your shopping experience just a little bit easier. So come in, meet the locals and shop Bush Inn. You'll find us on the corner of Rickerton and Waimari Roads. Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! Undergone home renovations? Looking for that special something to complete a room? Look no further than the Hitching Post. Their extensive range ensures you can find that special something. From plasma cut metalwork, to candles, artwork, weather vanes, or even a customised gate. So come on down to the Hitching Post, 722 Marshland Road.
Gordon Findlater joins us now with his preview of the weekend sporting activities. Canterbury will look to end their run of three straight defeats in the ITM Cup on Sunday when they take on top of the table Taranaki in New Plymouth. Canterbury has had a bad run of injuries to go with their recent form slump, but will take confidence in the return of All Blacks Colin Slade and Tom Taylor for Sunday's match. Colin kept up with Canterbury's progress while away with the All Blacks and is looking to help turn the Red and Blacks form around. Well, to be honest, I didn't actually watch a lot of the games with the uh, with the time zone difference, but certainly heard the results and it was tough. You know, the, uh, certainly a lot of banter flying around that the wheels had fallen off, and uh, we're pretty determined to come back here and um, fix and, and help out as much we can leading into these uh, semis and finals. Tom Taylor has been named to start at ten with Colin Slade slotting in at fullback. Slade has become accustomed to slotting in wherever needed in the Canterbury backline and is more than familiar with the 15 jersey. Tommy's played, played there this year already and uh, it's a seamless transition. I'm pretty comfortable flicking around a few positions in the back line and uh, yeah, obviously played, played full back before. So um, the way Canterbury play too, we sort of play with two tens, so it's just a number for us really. With Canterbury destined to play away to either Tasman or Taranaki in next weekend's semi-finals, coach Scott Robinson knows the importance of getting a win on Sunday should it turn out to be a prequel to a semi-final against Taranaki. Yeah, look, it is. It's really important we, we play well. You know, look, we've uh, led teams and uh, we've had chances to, to, to finish games off with a penalty in the last minute. And you know, look, we've had uh, just critical things in our games that haven't gone quite well, if it's execution or ref call or a couple of intercepts, what it is. So the belief's still there. It's just the ability to get some uh, momentum back and, and play good footy, really. Enjoy it. Johnny McNichol is another backline weapon now available for Scott Robinson after returning from injury. He was named to start on the wing when the team was named today. Tomorrow, Timaru will play host to a crucial final round robin match in the Heartland Rugby Championship. Mid Canterbury and South Canterbury both currently sit on 21 competition points coming into the final round of the championship with the winner assured of qualifying either third or fourth for the top four meets cup playoffs while the loser of the game will have to settle for a top seeding in the second tier Lahore Cup playoffs. The rare event of a draw could potentially see both teams miss out on a top four However, Mid Canterbury would seize the advantage with a better points differential. Last year's playoffs saw Mid Canterbury take out the Meads Cup, while South Canterbury took out the Lahore Cup. Saturday's playoff spot decider kicks off at 2.30 from Alpine Energy Stadium in Timaru. Canterbury Cricket will be giving away 5,000 tickets to the New Look Canterbury Kings 2020 first home game of the summer. It was also announced earlier this week that they will be giving punters the chance of winning a $10,000 car simply by catching a one-handed six as long as the lucky fan is dressed in the new Purple Kings colours. Their first 2020 match at the New Look Hagley Oval will take place on Thursday the 13th of November with Canterbury Cricket adding their own style of royalty to the excitement of Cup and Show Week. You're up to date with the latest in local sport. I'm Gordon Finlater for CTV Sport. Time now to check out your regional weather. Good evening Canterbury, let's take a look at your region's weather. Timidu hit 14 while Tamuka and Geraldine hit 15 degrees. Methvin 15, Ashburton and Rakar slightly cooler with a high of 14. Darfield 14, Leinston and Ralston enjoying the sunshine there on 14 degrees. Lincoln and Christchurch a high of 14, heading over to Akarawa a high of 14 degrees. Heading north, Rangiura, Kaipoi and Amberley heading 14 today.
Colverton, Hanna Springs and Cheviot on one of the region's highs with 15 degrees. At the top in Kaikoura, they hit 14 degrees. But what's in store for tomorrow? In Timidu, some low cloud at first, but mostly fine and sunny during the day with cool northeasterly winds. Hitting 4 degrees overnight and reaching 14 throughout the day. Ashburton mostly fine and sunny, with scattered light cloud at times and moderate northeasterly winds. Two degrees overnight, hitting 15 throughout your day. In Christchurch, patches of morning low cloud but long sunny periods during the day with a breezy northeasterly. Four degrees overnight, reaching 14 throughout your day. At the top in Kaikoura, some low cloud at first, but mostly fine and sunny during the day with cool northeasterly breezes. Four degrees overnight, hitting 14 throughout your day. And in other areas around the region, Tamuka and Geraldine hitting a high of 16. Methven and Rakai morning cloud clearing to become fine with a high of 15. Starfield, Leiston and Ralston cloud in the morning with a high of 15. Lincoln, an overnight low of 4 and high of 15. Over in Akadawa, morning cloud becoming fine with 14 degrees. Rangiura, Kaipui and Amberley, periods of cloud in the morning hitting 15 throughout the day. Colverton, Hanmer Springs and Cheviot, a high of 16 with an overnight low of 2. Looking ahead for what's in store for the rest of Canterbury. Similar weather from Sunday through to Wednesday. Mostly fine with sunny periods and high cloud and moderate northeasterlies. Milder on Thursday with high cloud increasing and thickening and northerly winds freshening. And that is all for your region's weather this Friday. Enjoy the rest of your evening and have a safe weekend. And that's CTV News for Friday and the week. I'm Grant Mangan. Good night. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.